This is The Instigators, presented by Seneca Resorts and Casinos. Nothing else comes close. We are going to Yes, diving into another Instigators Overtime, Marty, and I think uh, one of great interest for fans of the Sabres, the Amherst, and young talent in general, as we have Peyton Krebs coming up here in a moment. Uh, what do you, when you, when you hear that name, Peyton Krebs, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, obviously, I think he'll be linked to Jack Eichel for a while, you know, because he was part of the Jack Eichel trade. Uh, but for me, it's future, future for the Buffalo Sabres organization. You want to have uh, a look at what this the, the Sabres will look like in the next two, three years. Uh, go down to Rochester. Take the drive down to 90 if you're in Buffalo or if you're in Rochester. Go to the Blue Cross Arena and watch these Rochester Americans with Quinn, Paterka, Krebs, uh, Samuelson on D, Laxanen. There's, there's so many prospects to look at. Uh, they got great veterans, but for me, it's future. Krebs is part of the future, along with the Tage Thompsons and Victor Olofsons and Darlene of this world, Owen Power. I mean, you can go down to Michigan. It's a lot longer to drive to if you want to look at the future. Go down to Rochester, you get a good look at it. He was a bison when playing midget hockey. The hope is to be a Buffalo Sabre in short wow. order. When you're serious about the game, bet on Buffalo at the only sports books in Western New York. Seneca Resorts and Casinos betting counters are open daily and self-service betting kiosks are available 24-7 at all three locations, whether you visit Seneca Niagara, Allegheny, or Buffalo Creek. The Sports Lounge features the latest lines and multiple screens so you never miss a play. The sports book at Seneca Resorts and Casinos, where the love of the game meets the thrill of the win. Peyton Krebs of the Rochester Americans. Peyton, one thing that jumped off the page for me when acquired by the Sabres and looking into your bio, I immediately gravitated to the fact that you were born on the same day as Wayne Gretzky. At what point in your life did you find out that little nugget? Um, Probably in like novice or Adam, honestly. Yeah. I think my dad was like, you got the same birthday as Gretzky. And I'm like, well, I mean, I... He's got a few points. I got to catch up to him, but uh, no, I'll do my best. So no, it was it's, pretty cool. It's kind of weird to know though, that you were born two years after the great one retired. So the fact that, you know, you guys would, I, I would think, you know, when Gretzky is, but are you a hockey buff? Like, do you go back and say, Oh, these guys in the eighties and nineties, or even in seventies, do you, do you like search for players from that era or do you not pay attention to that era at all? Um, I look here and there. I'm more the current. Uh, I could tell you every guy and every team right now. Back then, my dad could tell you every team, and I just ask him. So, <laughs> what about in between? Like in the growing up years, were you a collector of any sort? Were you just a YouTube fan? Were you a network watcher? Like you know, as far as yeah. like there are certain nights of the week you were always mm -hmm. sitting down watching hockey. What was it like for you? I watch hockey every night. Um, I was a, I'm a big YouTube guy. Um, oh. Also had a, a lot of hockey cards growing up. And I've, obviously as I've got older, I've, those are still at the old parents place, but I, I don't have those now. Um, big YouTube guy I watched. I was big in at one point into like equipment manager videos. I, I'm big into hockey sticks. So I always like seeing what guys were using. Um, Sidney Crosby actually has a lot of videos where you can just watch his practice. And so as a kid, I would just watch every time I see a new video, I'll click on it and watch his practice. The Penguins have lots of videos on um, uh, what, what they got and, and their equipment managers. And you can see what behind the scenes Buffalo too. I, I watch lots of their uh, behind the scenes videos. I, I enjoy that and kind of get an insight what uh, is going on uh, behind the scenes. Okay. So Crosby has a very straight blade. Like I had always fooled me because I never knew where his shot was going and he had an amazing backhand. So what's your curve like? And did you look at some videos to develop the way your stick was going to be the flex and all of that? If you're a YouTube guy. Yeah, it was the exact same. I, I had his curve from Bantam to this year and I've added a little more toe to it now. So it's not as straight. I, I he, he's, he's got some strong wrists because from the outside top of the circles, it's hard to get a hard shot off with that curve. So I add a little more toe, but yeah, I going to actually 
Well, I used to go to the Flames games lots with uh, my buddy and um, in the back there was, you could buy the team sticks and Paul Byron actually has the same curve, used to have the same curve as City Crosby. And I would buy his sticks for hundred bucks or whatever it was and use his curve. And I had that growing up until, uh, until junior hockey where I could uh, eventually get my own curve made. And I had that curve made and use it all in junior. And then this year I had a little toe tour. So yeah. Former Sabre, Paul Byron and Marty, correct me if I'm wrong. Did Byron not score an unreal backhand goal against Toronto as they came back in that series? Yes. Uh, it was a shorthanded goal. I yeah. believe that he put up on the backhand it was pretty sick. Uh, now, yeah. You talk about buying sticks for, you know, a hundred dollars at the, the Calgary store, the, the flame store. When did you get your first pattern and how was that experience when you go from the, the generic patterns and all of a sudden your junior team says, Hey, you can get your own pattern with your name on it. How cool was that? Yeah, actually well, funny story is when I was, in Pewee, I you can go on my bower and pick your own curve and everything and um you know I, I had a little bit of inheritance from my great grandma she passed and my mom and dad are like put that money away like it's put it it's I, I got a thousand bucks and put that in the savings I'm like no grandma grandma would want me to get a custom stick <laughs> so I, I was like I'm determined to get that custom stick so I went on my bower got two custom sticks with my name on it in Pewee spent like 700 bucks all of it gone and sure enough they broke in like one month after i got them so that was kind of my first story getting a custom stick and then obviously once i got drafted in the western league actually they just had the stock stock curve and i picked that one and then eventually obviously got my own my own pattern so, okay yeah. strangest stick curve you've ever experienced up close i mean uh there's right. somebody on your team or an opponent or somebody you know about around the league yeah i'd say um well in, in the nhl bubble we were in the edmonton Oilers room and i had i was peeking at some sticks and dry settles curve is it's it's one of the weirdest it's just a straight paddle it's it's, it's like crosby where it's super straight but it's so long and yeah. skinny and i don't know how he shoots with it so that was probably the strangest uh I've ever seen. What okay, about so, Ryan? Hang on, one more. What about Ryan O'Reilly? That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, that too. That that that's a little bit. Actually, Paul Statsny uses something like that too, and um, so I've seen that a little bit before here and there. But uh, yeah, those are some weird curves. I'll give you two guys from the '80s slash '90s to go on YouTube later and see their curve. Claude Lapointe and John Leclerc, like those oh. two, they were ugly. You can't even tell if they're righty or lefty. It's a straight blade that bends one way or the other. So I'm telling you, after we're done, you know, you're home, you have a few minutes, say John Leclerc's curve or Claude Lapointe's curve. They were yeah. about the ugliest thing you could ever see. Yeah, I'll have to check those out for sure. Marty, I was in Ottawa. We were doing a fundraiser for Candle Lighters, which is a childhood cancer uh, organization. And we had a John LeClaire stick donated to the prize table. I had never seen it up close. I was like, who would want this? Because yeah. <laughs> the curve was so ugly. It was unbelievable. That's hilarious that you bring that up. Okay, what else? Um, okay, you were fascinated by the equipment. Were there any other kind of players in the early years that uh, that caught your attention for whatever reason point totals skating style heaviness like who did you gravitate to and why yeah I think I was definitely Crosby and then Jonathan Taves was another guy growing up um, I don't know why that's partly why we're number 19 not fully but I always liked uh, Jonathan Taves I just something about him being a really good leader, um, you know, just works his brains out, kind of caught my eye and um, not necessarily, I couldn't, there wasn't many videos on him, so I didn't watch him as much. And I kind of always said he was my favorite player growing up, but really I only watched Crosby. So that was kind of another guy uh, um, that I really liked, but I didn't, I wouldn't say I watched too much, so yeah. Um, okay, so you mentioned Pee Wee and youth hockey and being in the Calgary region. Um, any youth hockey tournaments? Because we all know now, like it's November, December, January, you know, youth hockey teams, Pee Wee teams, Bantam teams, Adam teams, they all go to tournaments. Any tournaments you remember going to that uh, really stood out to you or some fun things in the hotel that you guys were doing as kids? 
Yeah, there's lots. Um, well, I mean, obviously the one big one is the, the brick tournament. I, I yeah. played in that and um, what was pretty funny, my parents obviously didn't want to buy the hotel because it was uh, wait, like it was going to be expensive for the whole week. So we just brought the camper down, stayed in the camper and uh, had that. Uh, so that's definitely experience. And uh, that's a summertime tournament, right? The brick yeah, tournament. That's, so that's you can summer. you can enjoy the camper in yeah. the summertime, not in the winter. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, yeah, I'm trying to like the in midget. Obviously, there's the Mac tournament. It's called. Yep. Um, that was uh, those are always a really fun one. Right after Christmas, um, you're in midget hockey, and there's sold out rinks. Um, those are awesome. I'm trying to think of. Uh, did you ever young. go to the Pee Wee tournament in Quebec City or no? Or didn't no, that, didn't, didn't make it that? Yeah, we didn't make it out there. We actually another we went out to Fort McMurray once. We took an RV all the way out there in the winter, actually, and just with a bunch of the guys. So that was pretty wow. fun in Pee Wee. Um, yeah, I mean, my dad drove me everywhere, um, Vancouver, Toronto. So uh, it was had a fun, a lot of fun tournaments for sure. And the and the brick one for those that don't know is still played out of the mall, correct? Yeah, and that's yeah. where the hotel room would have been expensive at the mall for the entire week. Yeah. It's yeah. a great experience. I mean, if you, if, I think it's one of those crazy hockey fan experiences, you got to go do some public yeah. skating at the mall. It's, it's actually, what did you find? Like when, when you, I mean, obviously you're super young, you're not, you know, yeah. well-versed in everything globally, but did it still feel as unique as, as you, one would think it would when you're skating and you have like shopping yeah, yeah, yeah. people shopping around you? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. And you can, cause there's no netting. It's just the, the glass yeah. and then the railing, right? So you can yeah. shoot pretty much at people. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, I remember it's funny thing is we, we did okay. That tournament. The only thing I really remember is, is we, it was the last game of the tournament. We, it didn't mean anything. And me and my buddy, actually Quinn Olson, we, we got benched in the last game. I just remember crying after the tournament. So that's really the only good experience. <laughs> they really had the best experience. I have the Adam player getting benched in the last game. So it was tough. Okay. So you talk about the rink at the West and Minton Mall. I was drafted in 1995 by the Sabres and the draft was in Edmonton. So we went to the mall like two or three times. I was there for a week. We did every ride. It was, it was the first time I seen an amusement park like that inside a mall. Now your draft year was in Vancouver, right? 2019. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything that you guys did at the draft that would be like completely out of character or were you so business like doing your meeting meetings and all of it? Yeah, I will. What sucked for me was I had my Achilles. I got my slice my Achilles during before the draft. So I was on a scooter the whole time. So I uh, <laughs> didn't get to do too much. And there's lots of hills there too. So you can get clipping on the on the scooter. But one thing our, our agent did that was pretty cool is he rented out a yacht and uh, before the night before the draft and uh, had me and Bo and Byron were both with him. And we had dinner on that and went around the city and in, in the, the little yacht thing. So that was pretty cool that he did that for us. And um, yeah, other than that, uh, pretty much when I got drafted, I went to bed after because I was too scared I'd step on my Achilles and rupture it again. So <laughs> I didn't do, uh, I was pretty dialed in and uh, just got things done. So, yeah. <laughs> I I'm glad you brought up the draft, Marty, because hearing about Peyton's competitive spirit and having seen it on display now every night with Rochester, I am curious because I think it's human nature for players to compare evaluate themselves against others in your draft class who did you admire and who was like an arch rival um oof, it's a tough question i mean uh, i you know losing to the in what was it u18s to the americans you obviously um those are all they're all great guys but those, some of those guys you definitely wanted to um you know, be in front of or whatever, be better than, and you're still, you're still going. Um, I think that's definitely um, some guys, and obviously, any of the Canadian buddies. Uh, you know, Bo and Byron was one of those guys I wanted. I think you, I want him doing so well. I want him to keep going. Obviously, he's having a great year this year, and um, obviously, Cuzzy too. Going to Buffalo, I was pretty pumped, and I'll now being here with him, that was that was pretty awesome. So, does this we're, mean you don't like good. Jack Hughes and Trevor Zegers? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, they're great guys. They're guys, great guys. Uh, but no, you definitely, I mean, you're even now just playing them in world juniors, obviously, uh, there's still a little bit of sourness. So, yeah. What about, what about Matt Boldy or, or Spencer Knight or Cam York? <laughs> I don't know. Those, those are good dudes. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna break in. <laughs> so you were you were ranked tenth in the North American skaters, and you went seventeenth. Which listen, I went sixteenth, and so sixteen, seventeen. We're in a good place. Uh, but it, was there any moment in the draft where you thought, like around eight, nine, ten? You know, you got some teams that are coming up. You got Anaheim, Vancouver, Arizona, Minnesota, whatnot. Did you have a, a feeling like? Oh, it could be me, and you're at the edge of your seat. And how was that waiting period? Yeah, definitely. I think once it came actually to Buffalo, um, I had some really good meetings with them. I, I really thought uh, they came to Calgary at the time, and we chatted lots. And I think I talked to them ten times. I, I had a really uh -huh. good feeling. Um, I knew Cuzzy was still on the board too, so he he obviously I wanted him to go too. So. Honestly, I, that was one of those ones I was like, I could go here for sure. Um, I'd be excited. And um, uh, Vancouver is another one. I, I went out to Vancouver there before the draft and met all them. So, um, no, it, it, there was so many. I was like, I could go here. I don't know. Um, and then, you know, you're going to the 13th, 14th. You're like, hey, I just get picked already. And, um, <laughs> and uh but you know you're in the first round still, so you're like you know what I'm. I, at the end of the day, the draft doesn't matter. Just whatever you go to, you're gonna go. And um, yeah, and then actually, what was it Shea Weber was picking for Montreal, and I just chatted with him. He's with the same agent, and he said, oh, it'd be cool if I picked you. And then I was like, oh, maybe I'll go here, and then I didn't. And then um in Colorado you know you think you're gonna go and you didn't and then I'm like okay Vegas I mean there's some Western leaguers on there too I, I'll see if I then sure enough I went so my uh that was pretty cool so. oh Marty I think that opens the door for what you really wanted to dive into with this uh, Western League experience yes James Patrick so I played with Jeep number one did you guys call him Jeep or did you call him Coach yeah, Patrick Jeep. you called him Jeep. Jeep okay good I played with Jeep and back in the days, like we're talking 99, 2000, 2001, Jeep was a fitness nut. He would be <laughs> running in the backyard at his house with a parachute when nobody did that, right? So yeah. I want you to give me some good dirt on what Jeep is like as a coach in juniors, if he's still working out. Um, oh. The Sabres put a lap pool in the workout room and only one person in 10 years used it. And it was James <laughs> Patrick. Like, so I want some dirt on Jeep. Oh, well, you know, actually I was just on the phone with Jeep last night. It's funny you, you bring that up. Uh, he was an unbelievable coach for me. Um, and he's a fitness freak. Um, we were in the Western League bubble last year. He had a room. He brought his own rowing machine into the uh, <laughs> dorms and had a room dedicated to his rower. So there's a little dirt <laughs> on for you that he's still giving her heck. And, um, you know, he's. I was on the phone last night with him, and he's like, make sure you're working out after the game. Make sure you're working out before. I'm like, flipping rights I am. And um, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So, you know, he he's unbelievable. He, his, his work, like, in um, – practice we do like 45 laps yeah he would beat half the guys still in practice like doing the bag skating he'd tell guys like if someone passed me in, in a bag skate i would be flipping pissed i would hook him try to get him you know get get him back and and the fact that you did the guy just let let guy guys go by you is is a joke and so now no one would let let anyone go by them so they're you know they're giving her heck and especially you didn't want jeep going by or else you're gonna get get it get it good so now jeep um we've created a really good relationship over the years and um he's taught me so much i love, uh, oh, I love yeah, that he awesome. calls you still and that's how jeep is because he cares so i go back to the 06 playoffs and Brian Campbell hits RJ Umberger. And you were young, you're probably five years old, but I, I you probably have seen the, the the YouTube clip of Brian Campbell hitting RJ okay. Umberger in game one in the in overtime. And James Patrick called Soupy the next day and said, Listen, keep your head up. The Flyers, they're all going to come after you. And he didn't have to do it, but he cared. He cared about Soupy that he called yeah. him. And I love that he's calling you to make sure that you're on the right track because that's the kind of person that he is. So that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. No, he's, he's 
nothing but great things to say about him. So it's 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 a great great atmosphere with him for sure. Really yeah. briefly on hockey, and then a little bit more fun stuff. Uh, how would you describe your experience in Rochester so far? Yeah, it's it's I've never been traded for, so it's been a change for sure. Um, getting used to you know uh, some at some points you're like like this is my team, like this is where I'm gonna be. You know, like it's it's weird. You know, you're last year I played on so many teams because of different, you know, I was in the bubble and I, and it, it does feel, it feels nice to know that I'm in either Rochester or Buffalo. I'm not going anywhere else. Right. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a struggle at the start for sure. I, you know, mentally getting used to the systems, um, just trying to, you know, find where guys play, what different things do. And I think, uh, you know, Seth, our, our coach, has helped me a lot with just going over my video after every game and, you know, allowing myself to ease into it and, and make plays. And, you know, um, you really just get my confidence out here and, and start rolling. So, yeah, I'm starting to feel better every game, um, you know, find my find my groove. And I usually say it takes about 10 games um, to, to really get going. And um, I'm kind of at that mark. So, yeah. Now, I know you're in the moment, you're focusing at the games that you have to play, but do you look around and say, wow, Paterka, Quinn, Samuelson, um, there, there's so many prospects, and that could be the group that you're going to grow with and move up to Buffalo and, and try to really turn things around for the Sabres with the young quality prospects that you guys are? Yeah, no, it's, it's super exciting. I mean, you look at, you know, guys that you know come up from the ahl into the nhl as, as a whole and obviously there's a lot of great players in buffalo that will hopefully join here and um you know to build that from from the ground up is exciting um especially with obviously the guys that are here the caliber skill quinter paterka all those guys you mentioned um you know it, it will really become a family and um that's what you need to win um you know i, I was part of kind of a rebuild in winnipeg and now you know, they're rolling and that's exciting to see. And I, I feel like that's really going to happen here where we're going to find that core group and, um, you know, go win a Stanley Cup one day. You're playing more wing now, I understand. Yeah, um, just try to be versatile. I think um, I'll be back on center here too. So um, just uh, play where I can. Can I, can I be honest with you? I lobbied for you to lose an assist the other night and for Paterka <laughs> to get it. The, yeah. uh, the, the scoring sheet said you had four assists. I'm watching the last play going, that's not right. Paterka yeah. deserves to have three assists here. This isn't right. <laughs> well, I it's agree. <laughs> Spread the wealth. Spread the wealth. Yeah, as long as we get the <laughs> Well, they should they should put an asterisk next to it and say you had a really good third assist. Yeah, you started exactly. to play the tic tac toe toe into yeah. the net. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's good. Now, um, I know it's a different year with. You know, all obviously COVID is still a very much a factor, but any fun stuff that you're doing with your teammates, are you living with somebody? Do you have a roommate? Like, how is the dynamic with you guys when you're not at the rink? Yeah, I'm, uh, no, I, I live by with my girlfriend and my dog. Um, okay. we, we got a place, uh, kind of 15 minutes out of time, kind of just a, a quiet spot. Um, but no, I'm, we, we go for, you know, coffee, drinks, whatever. Uh, I guess not drinks, but just, you know, sodas and, um, cause it's not 21, but, um, <laughs> um but, uh, you're also Canadian. It's okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm Canadian, but I, I was there. Don't worry. I was there yeah. as a 20 year old kid too. And, uh, yeah, yeah exactly. I know the drill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mountain Dews. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, no, I mean, yeah, just um they're all great guys they're they're unreal to hang out with and, and be around so um there's always guys going out for coffee and different spots i'm trying to there's a little brochure that one of the wives gave my gal and we're, we're trying to hit all those spots that uh, she recommended for food we're big foodies so um trying to hit those spots and just uh yeah um Obviously, in the AHL, there's a lot more time off and a lot more time just to kind of do your own thing and, um, you know, get to know the city. So that's kind of been nice, too, to um, we kind of just play Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and um, the rest of those days are kind of just to explore and have some fun. Yeah. All right. Do you have your phone on you? Yeah. 
All right. Is the uh, screen cracked or is it perfectly intact? <laughs> oh, perfectly intact. <laughs> okay. This is good. These are, these are all things that, you know, you, you, you can learn a lot about a person by, by the phone. Now, I, who would have been the last person to text you outside of Amherst PR to yeah. try to get you to do this? So, uh, wait, say that again. Who, like... who was the last person to text you? Oh, on, like on my phone? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Do you get texts on your computer or in your <laughs> yeah. in your glasses? Or? Yeah, my girlfriend was the last person to text me. Yeah. Uh, last song that was played on your phone. Oh, let's see. Let's see. I think it was probably uh, Justin Bieber Christmas music right now. Oh. Wow. Wow. Very yep. interesting. Justin Bieber uh, mistletoe. <laughs> uh, most famous contact in your contacts. Um, I got, I mean, I got like, obviously the Mark Stone and all those NHLers, but, uh, <laughs> probably something outside of hockey, probably, uh, I got Chris Angel's phone number in my, uh, magician. Uh, oh, I got his nice. contact in my phone. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Alex <laughs> Tuck actually brought me backstage to Chris Angel's show and he gave me his phone number. So that's how I got it. That's really cool. I love that. Uh, best friend in hockey. Um, like in any, any team, any, any, anywhere. yeah. Um, growing up, it was always my cousin. Um, we played on the same team together. So I'll just say that. Yeah. My cousin Levi, we always, uh, he's actually, uh, going to school in, uh, in, uh, Michigan too. So, um, he's pretty nice. close. Cool, so, yeah. Awesome. Marty, last one for you. Um, uh, well, there's, there's a lot I still would like to, and maybe we'll have to have you on again, uh, to know more, I guess I was going to say uh, on the bus, you guys, I, I used to love busing. I was in charge of the movies. I would go to blockbusters back in the days, get a few movies for the boys. So yeah. what do you do on the bus? Are you a movie guy? A TV series guy or reading a book type of guy? This, that, the other thing. Uh, what do you like? Yeah, lately I'm a podcast guy. I'll just throw okay. the headphones and uh, yeah, I like uh, all the, you know, the hockey podcast, the, you know, the Joe Rogans of the world and all that stuff too. So um, yeah, I've been a big, big uh, like uh, eBooks, just listen to books or podcast guy. Um, I was actually listening to the Matthew McConaughey green light. I'd recommend it. It's really good. So, yeah. Oh, good. Maybe something to do. Well, you guys used to travel a lot in Winnipeg as well, right? Like your oh, yeah. trips this in is, Winnipeg were nuts. Oh, this is, this travels feels like nothing. We, I mean, I'm used to like 15, 20 hour bus rides. So <laughs> it's nice. Marty, you going to hit him with any more dis or dats? Uh, no, you know what? I'm going to save him for you, Duffer. So you got the rapid fire for uh, Peyton here, and I'm going to do the this or that's with you when we close out the podcast today. So you better be ready for, uh, I've got a lot of hard hitting ones. So, all yes. right, I'll, I'll, I'll prepare for it. Uh, Peyton, any, uh, anything else you can share on, uh, you know, the other guys Marty was talking about the Quins, the Paterkas of the world that our audience would love to know about. <laughs> um, hmm. If you throw a puck in the corner, who comes out with it? You, Quinn, or Paterka? Uh, me, for okay, sure. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that used to be a teammate of mine, Eric Bolton, was a tough guy. It was an enforcer. Uh, but he always used to say, I don't care if you scored 50. Throw a puck in the corner. Let's see who comes out with it. So that's yeah. why I'm asking this on behalf of Eric Bolton. Who comes out with the puck if it's in the corner and it's you? Okay. I'll ask Quinn and, and Paterka the same question at yeah. some other time. Let's see what the answer is going to be. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, thank you so much for the time. This has been great uh, getting to know you and uh, most importantly, getting to uh, watch you acclimate with your teammates in Rochester and within the organization. We can't wait to see where it all ends up. Awesome. Thanks very much, guys. I appreciate it. Peyton is an emotional, passionate player, and I hope all of that came through, Marty. Oh, it came through, and I could just see James Patrick now, like, hooking and clutching and grabbing everybody that are skating by him, uh, and uh, giving her the old, like, as uh, Peyton just said, which was awesome. 
uh, because that's all Jeep was. Like he literally yeah. led all the skates, right? At a mm -hmm. much older age than everybody else and was yelling at the young guys if they weren't keeping up. So love uh, a little Jeep uh, knowledge that we got from Peyton Krebs, but also, you know, getting to know more about Krebs, the newcomer now and the future of the Sabres with Quinn and Paterka is great. I, I think he handled all the questions uh, very well. And I also think he, I don't know if we could go so far as to say took exception to one of them, but I really don't think he liked talking about wing or center. So that's, no, he said, I'll and, be back and, at I'll, center. <laughs> and you know what? That is absolutely the right answer because he believes and bets on himself 100%. Yeah. And that's exactly what you want in a player. All right. Hit yeah. me up. I don't know what I'm in for here, Marty. Okay. Little this or that time, and there's going to be this, that, or the other thing as well, Duffer. So last week on the podcast, we did not touch on Thanksgiving, which is usually the benchmark for prediction in the National Hockey League. If you're in the playoffs or out of the playoffs, the season started a week later. So we figured December 1st is the new Thanksgiving for all these predictions. So I'll hit you with the Metropolitan Division. Washington, Carolina, New York Rangers are one, two, three. This, that, or the other thing. Who wins that division at the end of the season? Mm -hmm. I think the most well-rounded team right now outside of Washington would be Pittsburgh because they will ultimately get Malkin back at some point. But I'm going to keep riding the old pony in Washington. Okay, well, Pittsburgh was not a choice. So you go with Washington. I'm going to go with Carolina just because I think that they are steady Eddie and will give you consistent play throughout the whole season. The Rangers relying on a hot goalie and Washington um, Ovi doing Ovi things right now, but I don't know that that's going to keep up. So I'm going with Carolina. I see where you're going with Washington. How about the Atlantic? You've got Toronto, Florida, and Tampa as the top three. This, that, the other thing. Who wins the Atlantic when it's all said and done at the end of the season? It'll probably be Toronto, um, but that, you know, that's not to disparage either of the other two. I think Tampa might just kind of fall into that, you know, same type of position they were last year where they were fighting for home ice in round number one uh, as the regular season wore down. And, you know, quite frankly, I think Toronto looks really locked in right now and was still, still more to give offensively um, which then allows a little bit of give and take on the defensive side. They're almost going at a historic rate right now, um, you know, with their, with their goaltending tandem in, in Campbell and walls. So uh, one has to assume that they, you know, that the goals against rises a little bit, but I think the goals for might rise in conjunction with it. Okay, I want to say Florida, but I agree with you. I think it's going to be Toronto in the end. Uh, after a slow start, they really got themselves going. They've got Jack Campbell playing well in that. Um, so I'm going to go with Toronto, which will set up such a great storyline when playoffs come. Can the Leafs win a playoff series, right? Mm -hmm. So even though they keep winning the division, can they win a playoff series? How about this wild card in the East? There's three teams that I think are competing for two spots. Which team will be out of the playoffs when it's all said and done? Pittsburgh, Columbus, or Boston? This, that, or the other thing? Which one do you see out of the playoffs out of those three? Well, I can tell you the one I want in there. That would be Columbus. Um, yeah. I suspect, though, that they will be the one out. I suspect Columbus will be the one out as well. I think Pittsburgh is finally rolling. Jari's playing great. Boston has got themselves going again. So I'm going to agree with you on Columbus. Okay, Western Conference, same drill, same questions. Central Division, Minnesota, St. Louis. I'm not going to put Winnipeg in there just yet. So who wins the Central? Minnesota or St. Louis, this or that? Um, I think Winnipeg, to be honest with you. But okay. um, I, I think they have the biggest room for improvement based on the limited contributions from Shifley and Wheeler, which should correct itself over the course of time. And Nick Ehlers is motivated to do an awful lot more than, you know, produce in that, I guess, small window uh, of offensive surge that we saw earlier. Uh, Ehlers has tremendous upside, obviously, as history has shown. So I think there's ample opportunity for Winnipeg to still capitalize in the division. 
Okay, I'm saying St. Louis. I love Minnesota's made up and uh, makeup, I should say. I think they're great, but I, I somehow I have St. Louis as the team. I love how they've played against top teams this year mm -hmm. and how they can go toe to toe. And guys like Tarasenko uh, and uh, Kairou and those guys are stepping up. So I'm going to go St. Louis. In the Pacific, there's two teams right now that are at the top and then a bunch in the middle. So I'm going to say Calgary, Edmonton, or Fill in the blank to win the Pacific Division, Duffer. This, that, the other thing. Well, <laughs> I, I never, ever thought we would be having this discussion because Calgary was not going oh. to enter this conversation for me. However, when you consider how they are winning games, I don't think they're going to fall off the map. Nope but I don't think they're going to win the division. I think, wow. I think Edmonton will win the division. And, and obviously Vegas has a tremendous opportunity ahead of them. If they get fully healthy, which eventually would include Jack Eichel, but that is so far off on the distance, at least the Eichel component that I don't think it's fair to realistically assume that he could give them a massive boost. They, they're already they're already improving significantly to the level where most people thought they'd be despite the horrific run of bad luck mm -hmm. and injuries. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I think Edmonton can hang on for this. Okay. Um, I am going to say the Calgary flames, although as we speak right now, the flames have lost five games in OT. So that's five extra point because they play such close game two one, one, nothing two two, right? So that may hurt them, but I'm all, good for a, a goaltending tandem that plays the way Markstrom and Vladar are playing, the style that, uh, you know, um, so, uh, Sutter's got them play. So mm -hmm. I am, I'm all for Calgary. Manjapani, who doesn't like Andrew Manjapani and how he's responded this year. So I'm going with the Flames winning the Pacific. And last but not least, this, that, or the other thing, if there could be a surprise team that would get into the playoffs, would it be the Anaheim Ducks, the San Jose Sharks, or the Nashville Predators? This, that, the other thing. Who do you got? Surprise team. Because Anaheim is in as we speak right now. San Jose and Nashville are out. But I don't see Anaheim staying in that third in Pacific long. So there will be a team that's going to fit in there. Yeah, it'll be Dallas, in my opinion. Okay, but, well, that uh, was the other team I wanted to bring up, but. Uh, uh, honestly, like, you know, me, I want Nashville in there. Um, and I'm really excited to see the contributions of Duchesne and Johansson already this year, way more meaningful than we've seen in recent years. Um, I just don't know if it's sustainable. I really don't. Um, so I think Dallas can get in there, but, uh, boy, oh boy, it, it's tough, Marty. Honestly, like Anaheim has written such a, a really nice story to start the year. I don't know why I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical that it's going to last. It's a, it's unfortunate. I want to believe in them. I really do. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do the San Jose sharks are a team that will surprisingly sneak in uh, a few reasons. What well, they, they were dealing with COVID early in the season and Bobby Bugner wasn't behind the bench. There was a bunch and they still kept the flow. They still go. And, and I love Bobby Bugner. I think he's, you know, I mean, the boogeyman was here in Buffalo and uh, was great. So that, and I love great stories, especially when it comes to goaltending. A guy that was written off in Toronto, and all of a sudden, like, you realize it wasn't James Reimer's fault. And then Freddie Anderson was written off in Toronto, and you realize it wasn't Freddie Anderson's fault. But Reimer in San Jose is playing so good right now. And so I want him to get that personal success, right? Because he was in Carolina, had great success, but got passed by Nadelkovich and Morazic. And so... I kind of want the San Jose Sharks to get in. I think it's a great story, and they're dealing with a lot with, uh, like I said, COVID early, but also um, the Evander Kane situation that he's being sent down to Barracuda. Uh, there's a lot going on. They've got some young players, so I, I, I'm rooting for San Jose. I don't like to yeah. root for anybody, but I'm rooting for San Jose. Yeah, I like that. And, you know, the good news for Reimer is he doesn't have to see Toronto very often. That would be the nemesis <laughs> right now of his career. And, yeah. uh, you know, Say see you later to Toronto until uh, maybe the end of the road. Okay, well, that was my this or that kind of uh, 
prediction edition, let's just say at the Thanksgiving, December 1st, kind of like a mark at the NHL level right now. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we're probably going to close it out with what, Duffer? Three stars of uh, the week? Three stars, and you can start with number three. Okay, I'll start with number three. For me, it's Ilya Samsonov. Uh, The guy has not lost in regulation this year, and I thought there's no way Samsonov will turn out to be the goalie that he was uh, projected to be, the prospect that he was. Vitek Vanacek looked ahead of Ilya Samsonov. And in the last week, he's beaten Carolina. He's beaten Florida. Uh, I know as we speak, they play Florida on Tuesday night. So let's just see what happens. But Ilya Samsonov right now is a star of the week for me. Third star of the week. Third star. All right. My third star would be Will Borgen. We got a chance to see him up close. He also wears number three. So it's fitting. He had three big blocks against Buffalo. He's played. He has at the time of this recording played a couple of games for the Kraken and has shown exactly what we saw of Will Borgen here in Buffalo. So long may the success last for Will Borgen, wherever that may be. Okay. Second star, Alex Ovechkin. I mean, the guy is second in scoring right now when you look at all the talents in the league, right? Not just goals. We know Ovi can score. We know he's got 18 and 19 games right now, and 19 goals in 22 games, sorry. But he has 18 assists to go along with it, 37 points, only three back of dry sidle. I'm telling you, without Backstrom, without TJ Oshie, all the, the, the injuries that Washington has suffered, and all of a sudden there goes Ovi. Just doing his thing better than ever. So second star, Alex Ovechkin. Making significantly less than Ovechkin, 1.7 per on a three-year deal. Leads the wild in scoring, is in, as of this recording, the top 10 in goal scoring in the NHL. Ryan Hartman, who has 12 already. I always loved Ryan Hartman at his best. Unfortunately, his game did fall off significantly to the point where you weren't sure whether the early stages of his career were, in fact, sustainable. Now, because of how you phrased it earlier, the construction of the Minnesota Wild is Hartman really has found a proper role. And it is a godsend for Bill Guerin who will be in cap, you know what, for years to come. You (laughs) need to have overachieving underpaid forwards and yes. Ryan Hartman fits the bill. Well, the cap, you know what, because they had to buy out Parisi and Suter and now they uh, have a lot of money that is uh, set aside for those guys. So yes, Hartman, a really big value player for the Minnesota wild first star for me. And there's a theme. It's the Washington capitals. They're eight, one and one in their last 10. They're first in the metropolitan division. They have only lost three games in regulation as we record this, which is the lowest amongst the NHL. Um, And they're doing it, as I pointed out, without some of their top players. Um, So I'm going all in on the Washington Capitals, all in on Ovi, all in on Samsonov, all in on Peter Laviolette and Scott Arneal and uh, everybody else in Washington uh, and Ted Leonsis, whatever. <laughs> I love what they're doing. So Washington Capitals, first star. You're allowed to mention they're tied for first overall as well. Washington has been a tremendous story, but tying in with our individual who was the big guest of the hour here on Instigators Overtime, let's dial it back to Rochester and talk about the AHL scoring leader as of this moment, and that would be Jack Quinn. What a phenomenal start to the year, and the beauty of Quinn's game is it's not just power play. It's about presence every time and the ability to see his mates and make plays for his mates. He's not just a shooter, although when he has shot this year, it has been so decisive, so determined. That's why he's scoring with regularity like he did in junior, but his playmaking ability is magical to watch. I can't get enough of Jack Quinn right now. Well, you mentioned the five on five play. I'm still in awe of how the power play is clicking and the passing and the execution. And, you know, it goes from Krebs to Paterka to Quinn. And now Jankowski got a goal the other day on a four on three. Jankowski's in Buffalo now. Uh, But it just like that power play is so cool to watch. If you're a youth hockey coach and you want to see how to set up your power play five on four, four on three, pull up the Rochester Americans highlights and, and look at it. They are doing a fantastic job. Marty, last word. Anything? Uh, No, it's December, Duffer. You know what that means? We got to start 
looking for gifts for our oh, gift no. exchange coming up in like four weeks from now. So be ready. Three weeks, three and a half weeks. Oh, you got any hints? Well, I don't know what you're getting me, but I know what I'm getting you. Well, can you give me a hint as to what you might be interested in wanting this year? Well, we have a little uh, gift exchange uh, happening in our, like a group, our broadcasting group, the oh, comedian crap. content. I forgot to get a gift. Uh, you have until December 9th, I believe, to get okay. one. I think I better that's get on that. Night. Yeah. Um, so, you know what I put as suggestions? You know, you had to put suggestions. I put colored pens. So I can't wait to see who got me as Secret Santa, what kind of pens I'm going to get. So, you know what? Papers pens markers you you know me you see where i'm doing on uh, every night mm -hmm. my my paper is very colorful my calendar is colorful look i'll show you for those watching on tv this is how my calendar is look at all these beautiful colors and the blues and purples and yellows mm -hmm. that's all my calendar is so well you go. That, that is not stationary stationary which just happens to be one of my favorite Anne berlin songs that paper was flying as do we we'll see you next time on instigators overtime <laughs>